laughs so hard she uh, throws up more than spitting uh, up and uh, everything. Okay. But not every time she eats. Um, and she's just coughing hard. And we, today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So we thought, okay, we need to... Uh, International corporations are modifying our weather all the time, and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. I was 
just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nano aluminum all over the world, uh, particularly the United States. And I, you know, did a little research and looked in my own case and my skies, and and I see these tight patterns, and it's obvious a pattern. It's not contrail. Uh, the whole thing contrails is nonsense. You watch a plane fly, and it turns on this cloud and uh, of material coming out of the back of it, and then it stops, and there's a break, and then it starts back up. Well, it, I knew the jet's not cutting his engine off. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have a, a 747 or a 767 or something. We know it's not turning its engine on and off, and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern. And uh, Then pretty soon, uh, for instance, we've noticed lately, there's been none of the chemtrails, or very few of them. Well, did... Shame to say I am 60 years old. I remember what blue skies looked like. I remember as a small child looking up at the sky and watching a contrail. I was probably three or four years old sitting on a tricycle. It was March. It was really cold. It could have been a contrail. It was probably, looking back, some of their first geoengineering attempts. What I look at now in the intensive care unit where I work, I see every year something different happening. This winter, I didn't see a lot of flu. And interesting, the people that got the flu got the shot. What I see coming up on cultures now when people are testing for the flu I see coronavirus, I see rhinovirus, that's the common cold. People are getting pneumonias from the common cold. This year, the theme seemed to be atypical pneumonia. What's atypical pneumonia? What that means in medical speak is something they cannot explain. Alveolar hemorrhage the tiny little pockets in your lungs where you exchange oxygen. Several patients I noticed this year had alveolar hemorrhage. What's that about? This is something that we all have to talk to our doctors about, and they're not gonna listen, I can tell you, because I talked to the doctors. We have very good intensivists in our intensive care unit, and they are not listening to me. We have to speak up. We have to speak loud. ...to serve as cloud condensation nuclei. This important excerpt from Dr. Kirby's 2009 presentation makes it clear that IPCC climate scientists are fully aware that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere with the effect of deliberate climate warming. There are very, there's plenty of evidence that large regions of the climate are lacking sufficient aerosol to form clouds. Contrails are a, a well-known example of that. These are not smoke trails. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. But if there was a conspiracy to use jet-produced clouds to cool the atmosphere, would it work? No. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about um, would say that. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about um, would say that. 
Dr. Penner's statement is not taken lightly by climate scientists. Her comments echo the 1999 climate change publication titled IPCC Special Report on Aviation and the Global Atmosphere. On page 17, the quote, Contrails tend to warm the Earth's surface, similar to thin, high clouds, unquote. So, jet aircraft are dumping chemical aerosols high in the atmosphere to create artificial contrails that spread into thin, high, artificial clouds that your TV meteorologist has been told to misrepresent by telling the public they're only ice crystals. Dr. Kirby's almost too casual comment confirming that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere reveals that this covert geoengineering and chemtrail operation is well known by government agencies like NASA.